Welcome to Bristol. More specifically, the Clifton Suspension Bridge. This historic bridge was built over the River Avon nearly 200 years ago. It is now a famous landmark and tourist attraction. In the heart of the busy city, it's used daily by commuters coming in and out of Bristol. Known amongst its invertebrate locals as a plant lover's paradise. But it's not only insects that can be found here. There are also surprise guests who share this historic bridge. A species clouded in mystery. How did they get here? How are they surviving? Welcome to the world of the wool lizard. With their expressive eyes and exotic coloring, they're a wildlife lover and photographer's dream. Hello, well after that hopefully rather dramatic and cinematic opener, you join me out in the field. And as you're well aware by now, out in the field means pretty much on Clifton Suspension Bridge. The plan today really is just to get as many different types of shots as possible and try and show you the beauty of these stunningly colorful little lizards. I'm hoping that I'll be doing a lovely voiceover to try and explain what the hell these are doing here because they're not native to the UK, but a very welcome addition to the Bristol wildlife scene. Wool lizards were first introduced to the UK in the 1800s when they were kept as pets and then subsequently released into the wild. But why here, in this isolated part of Bristol? Well, unfortunately, no one really knows. There is another small colony known near the university campus where it's been theorised that they could be escapees from the zoology department, but how they could have made the mile-long journey to the suspension bridge is anyone's guess. They were first recorded in this area in 2019, and there seems to be a healthy population that's made this area a home. The south-facing cliffs and rocks are perfect for these cold-blooded reptiles to warm up in the sun, and the plants and flowers mean that there's lots of invertebrate food for them. The limited suitable habitat here means that this population should remain isolated and not pose an ecological threat to our native wildlife. I'm currently using my OM-1, and that's my OM-1 with my 300 f4 and a 1.4 converter on it. I mean, it's not a macro lens, but it can nearly double up as one, especially for things this small. I don't want to get too close because they're quite skittish once you do get too close. My lens is currently, I'd say two and a half meters away from the lizard and it's frame filling. So you don't really need much else for these. The conditions are a bit tricky for exposure because sometimes it's sun, sometimes it's cloud. Settings wise, I'm aiming for F8 because I'm using a converter. F8 tends to be where it's at its sharpest. And then also, because the subject is so small, the depth of field is absolutely tiny. So 
the more depth of field you can get, the better. In fact, this is probably one of the aspects where having a, a micro four thirds sensor plays to our advantage because you get double the amount of depth of field. So we don't have to stack necessarily, although I might try a bit of focus stacking. So yeah, F8, as low an ISO as possible, and then just let the, let the shutter speed go wherever I need it to go for the exposure. One of my ideal shots for today is to try and get a lizard with its tongue flicking out. The problem is these lizards don't do that very often. So what I'm gonna do is utilize Pro Capture on my OM-1. I'll maybe be explaining to you what that is right now. Pro Capture is essentially a pre-roll mode for photography. So the camera starts recording a sequence of images when you half press the shutter button. And then when the shutter button is fully pressed down, it records a predetermined number of images, both before and after the shutter is pressed. It means that you don't always have to anticipate when something is about to happen. And it can be a huge asset for situations like this, or for example, when a bird is about to take off. Anyway, back to me in the field. It's going to take a lot of patience. The problem with this is I found they only really get their tongue out when they've moved to a new position and they want to taste or smell the air. So what I'm going to have to do is track the lizards, keep concentrating for an awfully long time. Once they move, make sure that they're still in focus because I think what I've already mentioned is the depth of field is incredibly low. So the focus is very hard on this. I'll track it when they move hopefully get it as soon as they stop moving and get with the tongue out. So fingers crossed. If I do manage to get any, I'll let you know. That brings to a close my video all about wall lizards. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.